Welcome back. Well, eyes continue to be on Guyana to see how the country's March 2nd election pans out. In its ruling this week, the CCJ nullified a recent report submitted by Guyana's Chief Elections Officer, Keith Lowenfield, in which she had dumped over 115,000 votes cast in the March 2nd polls. Now, the CCJ has also ruled that Lowenfield should produce a report directed by Guyana Elections Commission, Chairperson Justice Claudette Singh. In delivering the judgment, CCJ President Adrian Saunders said he hoped there would be a return to normalcy in Guyana. Now, People's Progressive Party, Presidential Candidate Irfan Ali and General Secretary Barrett Jagdew are taking the matter to the CCJ. Ali and Jagdew were challenging a ruling by Guyana's Court of Appeal in the case filed by the APNU AFC supporter Aslan David, the results which constitute data generated from the 2,339 statements of recount show that the PPC won the March 2nd polls. Now we're now joined by member of the PPP, Priya Manikchan, for an update. Good morning, how are you? Hi, good morning, I'm, I'm good, how are you? I hope you're doing well. I am doing well, I always say there's only one mood on a Friday. Ha, ah, yes. And I hope it's the same for you in Guyana. There are a lot that is happening in Guyana. I mean, all eyes are on the country as it pertains to the election. Can you tell us how Guyana ended up in this position? And how do you feel seeing your country in this place? Well, very simply, we ended up here because, um, as you know, Guyana went to polls on March 2nd of this year, and that was um, very, very smoothly done. Everything was very well done on that day, not because I say so, but because every uh, significant stakeholder said so, including the Ghana Elections Commission, every single political party, including David Granger, um, and all the international local observers, the Carter Center, the ABC countries, um, the Commonwealth, the OAS, CARICOM, all the observers said uh, election day activities went very, very well. They concluded very well. There were no problems. People had no problems with being um, disenfranchised. And the issue really started when um, the counts started coming in. Uh, we divide Guyana into 10 regions. Nine of those regions had been concluded. The PPPC was in a, an almost unassailable lead. And then we had a region four count, district four, which is traditionally won by the PNC, APNU, AFC, that is the party in government right now. And um, they were winning it, but they were not winning it with the margin that would negate the a number of votes that the PVPC had gotten across the country. So right. immediately we started seeing within a day and a half of the elections, um, very vulgar, and opaque, the very open, transparent efforts to rig the elections. In fact, I believe one former prime minister, Mr. Bruce Golden, said very clearly he'd never seen such a transparent attempt to alter uh, election results as he has seen in Guyana. In other words, he's never seen people try to rig um, like that. And, you, you know, Bobita, this, this happened on literally live tv where cameras video cameras were rolling it happened with um facebook cameras going live it happened literally in a glass room the room was enclosed by glass it happened in front of the entire media core it was a shameful shameless shocking attempt in 2020 to do to Ghana what had been done to Ghana in the 1980s um, rig an election, steal from the people of this country their will to... And you know, an election is a prime demonstration of a, citizen, a citizen's democratic right. And to see what is happening in Guyana, how do you feel about that? It, it, it is... Uh, to ask me how I feel is... <laughs> you get a range of feelings. I am angry that... Uh, People could, in your very presence, in your very face, snatch from you what is inherently yours, um, which is, like you said, 
elections are really only about one thing. Political parties make it about political parties, but elections are really about giving to the people, to every single person, ordinary people of the country, a chance to speak through their ballots about what they'd like to see their life look like. And to see that stolen or an attempt to steal that um, is very angering. It's also very sobering because it reminds us that we, we have what we thought was a history in Guyana that was behind us. It was something we could discuss maybe even semi-fondly with our grandchildren. And we realize that it's not. It's something that is very present with us because we have the same um, political party which has a DNA, which has uh, an ideological belief that they are entitled to power. And if the people of Guyana do not give them that power through the ballot, then they're entitled to take that power, um, steal that power, bully their way into getting that power. And that is a sobering thought because we still have a lot of work to do um, as far as it relates to having that political party understand what elections mean, and particularly that the people of 2020 in Guyana and encouragingly across the world will simply not allow, not allow um, an election to be rigged in uh, this part of the world in this year. Now, I know at this stage it may be a little bit difficult to say because of all that is happening, but what are the next steps for you all? It's not difficult at all. What has happened is the Caribbean Court of Justice gave um, re, uh, a judgment with such clarity that it would be difficult not to understand it. They said a few things. They said the elections in Guyana were run off very smoothly. They said that um, the GCOM chairperson, nor commission, nor collection of them, nor the, C, the chief election officer, Nobody has any ability, right, mandate, jurisdiction to alter the number of votes that, uh, you, you know, we went through a recount process. Um, so it wasn't only just the election night count, we also went through a recount process where... But while uh, all of this, I'm sorry to cut you off, but while all of this is happening, are you all making plans for, you know, how are you, how are you going to uplift Guyana in the coming months when all of this is over because there's life after all of this? There is life after all of this, but we have to get through this period and that is not, while it seems like a certainty because that is the only thing that makes sense to people who live in a democratic world where you live, um, it is still a very big struggle here. So frankly, where we are right now is waiting for the today the chief election officer is to submit to GCOM today the a report that shows an accurate count you spoke in your introduction of the 115,000 votes that he's attempting to throw away um, the, the chairperson last night wrote him a letter saying that he is to give a report including all the votes all the valid votes which would amount to 460,000 um, and reflecting which party won the election. He has until, I believe, 2 p.m. today to do that. Um, I, I don't remember if it's 2 p.m. Let me just let me just check to make sure. Um, yes, he has until 2 p.m. today to submit that report. Once he does that, then we have a declaration that will be made possibly within the course of the day in a swearing-in of Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali by tomorrow. If he does not do that, then we have other questions that we have to answer and other avenues to pursue. How do we uplift Guyana? Hmm. Big question, because you know, as you know, we are in the middle of a pandemic. Nothing is happening in Guyana regarding that pandemic. You are in Trinidad and Barbados and St. Lucia and St. Vincent and Grenada and all the other countries that went into lockdown at the same time that we did are now recording zero active cases. We had three deaths in the last week. We are we are recording not only new active cases um, by the scores, but we are actually still recording deaths. And the reason for that is because instead of a government focusing its efforts on um, fighting this pandemic, pandemic, offering subsidies to the people who have to stay in lockdown, 
offering um, sanitization equipment and so on. We have a government trying to stay in power in defiance of the will of the people. So that's taking up all their time, that's taking up all their money. We still see at the same time that they say they have no money to offer subsidies and hampers and sanitization material to the people of the country, they're entering into um, $100 million contracts at a time when they're merely in a caretaker capacity. Um, those contracts are, are very openly going to friends and cronies of the government. So we don't have a government that is looking after the people of its country, of this country, and it's going to be difficult, um, but not impossible. The Right now, we are four months after the elections. We could have been four months into doing the things that the PPPC had promised the nation when we went to the election, including removing VAT from electricity, removing VAT from water, um, reversing 200 VAT measures, uh, restoring jobs in the sugar industry. 7,000 of those were, were taken by the last government. Restoring jobs in the forestry sector, looking after oil and gas sector, making sure common entrance. We just wrote what is your SEA that you postponed to August. We wrote ours last week in circumstances where, like I said, debts are being recorded because of the pandemic. So we have a lot of work to do. We're ready to do it. We're disappointed that we have not been, been able to get off the ground as yet. And then we're going to expect to see responsible leadership from the um, AP and UAFC where they hopefully will say to their supporters that they have lost the election. They're not saying that as yet, as of yesterday, from the president right down, caretaker president, they are still maintaining that they won the election. So we're seeing very reckless and irresponsible do you, leaders. Do you, do you foresee a fight back? A fight back from who? From the opposing side. There is a claim by the AP and UAFC, that is the incumbent government, that they have won the elections. The entire world has said that uh, based on the numbers in the recount, they have not won the elections. Will they want to stay in government? I think the whole purpose is to stay in government, despite what the people wanted or what their election numbers show. I don't believe you will see um, numbers in the streets the way we might have seen previously in Guyana. I, I am aware that they have been, there have been calls for people to come out and protest and you see small numbers like 30 or 40. Um, look, in every election there is a winner and there is a loser. Um, it's one post you're going for the presidency and only one person can be president and that is always something that's difficult to um, swallow when one loses. We lost in 2015. We were forced in, in the midst of our shock and our own personal pain and so on to get up and get out and offer leadership to our supporters and to explain to them that uh, a loss did not mean um, death, that we, we could come back stronger, which we did. Um, and it's going to require leadership from the AP and UAFC. If there is no leadership, let me just say, if you come on the ground here, the reading on the ground is very clear. They've moved from, we won the elections because we had the most votes, to uh, we think we should be there because we're better leaders. There's no talk anymore about they have it, they, them, uh, the AP and UAFC getting the most votes because they have not gotten the most votes. Um, in two sets of recounts we've seen that uh, they have been beaten by more than 15,000 votes. And so the conversation is no longer we won the election. The conversation is we should be in government because of, or we should be in government because right. the other side isn't good enough. And, and that's not how democracies work, as you know. Of course. All right. Well, thank you, Ms. Manikchan, for joining us here on The Morning Brew. And we will definitely be keeping our eyes out at Guyana to see how everything plays out. And there's always light at the end of the tunnel. It's time for a break. We'll be right back.